what's up guys it's time to see how to solve actually a reactor with multiple reactions so we will see essentially PFR and PBR which essentially is almost the same as PFR but you need to add ergun equations and some other details but let's see how can we solve this so first things first we've calculated all the rate of reactions of every species involved what does that mean let me go back that means that we have all these here. We have our rate of reactions and we have our, let's say, individual rates here per species and per reaction. And we have the rate loss here. Let me go to the flow chart. I have a flow diagram. Let me show you where are we. Uh, once we numbered the reactions, we wrote the mole balances, we got the net rate of reactions, which was the past video, it's time to actually solve it. So let's, what we're going to do is essentially substitute in every single, here, in every single reaction, our rate of reactions. So literally what we're going to do is to insert the rate loss we got. So we got this rate of reactions, these ones here. We're going to, you know that for PFR, you got this differential of flow divided by the differential of volume equals the rate of reaction of that species. And the interesting part here is that we will have a couple of first order ordinary differential equations. What does, what does that mean is we have this differential equation and we have this definition here that depends essentially in the concentration or the flow rates, essentially more in flow rates. The good thing is that we're going to solve it with software. Doing this by hand will take you a lot of time. And when I mean a lot, maybe I mean three to four hours when you could do this in 15, 20 minutes in a software. And actually you can solve a model and do sensitivity analysis, uh, change fractions, conversions, numbers, flow rates very easily. And it actually doesn't, doing it by hand doesn't make sense. So let's see how can we solve this? Now, we're going to get a general equation. You will need to substitute for each flow rate because we are interested in flow rate of A, B, C, and whatever species you got there. So, mm, what we're going to have essentially is this. Let's say for A, we're going to have the flow rate of A versus the volume equals the rate of reaction of A. And what was the rate of reaction of A? Well, we got it here. And this, you know, is a function of uh, concentration. This is actually for gas, because I'm already supposing that you're using a PFR for a gas. But if it were for a liquid, you know that this will uh, simplify to concentration of A, concentration of B, etc. Function of concentration only, not uh, flow rate of A and total uh, concentration of, of flow rate. Mm, for other species will be exactly the same we are not caring of it's the base case scenario which is A we're going to include B, C and D flow of B, flow rate rate of reaction of B you also got this of course uh, we did this before so what I want to show you is essentially we're going to make the derivative of this yeah the derivative of the flow rate with respect to volume and we already calculated this so literally we're just going to say this equals this and what we're going to do is we're going to set all differential equations with their initial state you know that the differential equation normally has a state here and here initial and final so if you're talking volume you will probably talk about flow rates so when initial volume so let's say the initial volume is going to be zero and the final volume of course that's what you're going to use you want to see how much flow rate you, you, uh, you're going to get for, I don't know, 10 cubic meters or maybe 3 cubic meters. That's what you're going to play with, but it's a known value or at least it's a value that you will be changing. And of course, the initial flow rates. Initial flow rate of J will be the number they give you. So if you have no feed, maybe they tell you you have no products, that will be zero. If they tell you they have stoichiometric relationships, maybe you have A plus 2B and they tell you, you you are pouring 100 moles of A, well, of course, if they tell you to stay geometrically, you need to have 200 moles of B at the beginning. 
Now, let's let us do this little example. Now, this is the mole balance. Yeah, our mole balance equations are here. Equations one, two, and three. Um, I also got my rate of reactions, which are the net rate of reactions, which are here. It's four, five, and six. Just to let you know that these differential equations are going to be set from volume equals zero. Then you got the flow rate at the initial condition. Hopefully you have that data by now. And because I'm kind of lazy, I'm going to substitute the concentration here. So this is for gas phase already. You know that if you already got the concentration, you could just leave it by like alone. You just, you just will need to say what is the initial concentration of A, initial concentration of B. Those data you get easily from the problem. But let's suppose we already have a gas phase, so let's substitute concentration of A, which is actually the initial concentration, times the change in flow rate of A divided by the total flow rate at that moment. And let's do it for B and C. Now, those are my equations 7, 8, and 9. Now, let's define CT0, because, of course, this is a number. Our software will be asking us what's that number, so we set that number. Actually, you are too lazy, you could also add this. You would say the initial flow rate, or total flow rate, uh, divided by, I think it's uh, volumetric flow rate. Okay, and yeah. Well, then you will need, of course, to establish how much is the total flow rate at the beginning, which will be a number you have, and the volumetric flow rate at the beginning, which is also another number you have, and so on. So just remember, if you add an equation and has two unknown variables, you will need, or you will need to set those two variables to either equations with known variables or to numbers. If you add an unknown variable, you will need to set that unknown variable. So I think you're getting the idea is essentially like in mass balance you want to have zero degrees of freedom what else do we have oh, of course uh, the one thing is the initial total flow rate which is here a number none which is a constant and the other thing is the flow rate or the total flow rate at any volume or at any, any time so we're going to set that because it's changing you have your tubular here reactor so as they react flow rates are going to change, maybe flow rate of A is going to decrease, this is going to decrease, and this is going to increase, and there's, a, of course, a lot of change of moles, so saying that the flow rate is constant will be almost uh, very, very idealistic. It's very stupid. So let's set this equation, and where do we go? What, where are we going to get this? Well, these are going to be gotten from here, from our differential equation. So that's the actual problem. It's a differential, it's not a value, so what this means is that you need to integrate for every single volume and you will get this equation. And since integrals you know are from differentials, imagine having at this volume 0 0.001 you got this flow rate and at volume 0 0.2 you got another flow rate and so on. So imagine doing that by hand will be almost impossible well, not possible, not impossible, but you will need to take a lot of time. And when we use a software, the computer uses it automatically, and we have nothing to worry about. And one other important thing I want to show you is that equation 4, 5, and 6 have these constants here, constant 1 of A and constant 2 of A. You need to set that. And there are constant values, and if not, maybe they give you the frequency factor, they give you the temperature, and they give you well, essentially the activation energy. You will need to set that as variables or as constants in the, in the software and then use Arrhenius equation here. But what I mean is that these are set or constant values, even though they vary. But since it is isothermal, you're not going to change this and the activation energy doesn't change and frequency factor does not change. So just get me the idea that this is a number. Now, you're going to have a set of equations, like in this example, let's say we got A turns into B, and then A plus B turns into C, whatever you get, you have them here. You got your three mole balances for each 
species, you got your three initial conditions. If you fail to give one condition, you're going to have a problem. Then you have your rate of reactions. Hopefully you get them in terms of concentration. And they must be net values, not only uh, for equations. And once you do that, if it's liquid phase, it's okay, you can continue. But if it's gas phase, you will need to correlate these equations to the change in flow rates because there is a change in volumetric flow rate. And once you get that, you need to set all the equations that you are left here. Now, once you get it, just click on round button and you will, you have no, like no other variables. You're going to have zero degrees of freedom and you get your equations. You're going to get either tables of data and more interesting graphs. You're going to have a how flow of A decreases because it's reacting how flow of B is decreasing because it's reacting and how flow of C is increasing because it's reacting. So let's say this is flow and this is volume. Many people or students think that this x-axis is time, but it's not time guys. It's very important that you know that this is volume because actually it's the derivative of F with respect of B. Since it's a steady state, if you were to model the steady state, you will need to choose a volume and given that volume, you're going to have the same flow rate because the point of steady state is that you have no changes in time. So that's the idea. This is going to be constant. The flow rate is going to be constant because there's no flow rate. No, because there's no change time. Ch there's no change of flow rate in time. And by now you should get all flow rates versus volume. And yeah, that's actually at the end, you could actually use this equation to calculate the conversion of A and how much volume would you need. That is for the PFR. I tell you here, yeah. Because you're going to know the final flow rate, you're going to know the initial flow rate, and yeah, that's everything. Very easy. Now, I also told you we were going to do a PBR, and I told you almost as PFR. So do as PFR, exactly the same uh, steps. Let me actually show you. You're going to find... What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.